This is Uma for Box Nation. I'm joined by Hall of Fame promoter Frank Warren. Uh, eventful weekend, uh, not involving yourself. Uh, we'll start with that on, on Sky Sports. You would have had a, a good day, obviously a good result for, for you guys at the Etihad and then a cracking fight you'd have watched between Maud Dean Clark. Yeah, the, uh, the the result was good. It was a draw. Um, I know, looking back on it, it'd be love to obviously to have, to have won it. And... Uh, I don't know. I thought, I thought I thought we could have done that, but anyway, we didn't. So I'm pleased we got the draw. As regarding the uh, fight, it was a it was a real competitive match, wasn't it? Very very competitive. I thought it always would be, and uh, they both of them gave their all. There's no doubt about that. Very 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 entertaining. Many people labelling it as uh, one of the greatest British title fights we've seen in recent times. Would you agree with that? It was. It was a. It was a very close fight. They were very evenly matched. There's no doubt about that. No doubt about that. They gave everything, both of them. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, going into it, the betting favourite was Fabio Wardley, um, because we weren't sure about how good really Fraser Clark would be as a professional. But I, I think at times he showed in the ring his amateur pedigree. Would you Would you agree with that, with Fraser? Yeah, he did. But I also, you know, I, I think Fraser done extremely well. Um, I thought Fabio, and I don't want to upset anybody, I thought he'd done just enough to win it. But, you know, it was what it was, and not complaining about it. That was just as how I was sort of scoring it. But um, no, it, was a, it was a bloody good fight, but a great effort from both guys. They, they didn't leave anything anything behind, did they? That was for sure. Yeah, of course, you, you worked with Fabio in his last fight um, in Saudi Arabia when he beat uh, David Adelaide. And he'd always, of course, um, got his man out of there. It's the, you know, it's the first time he had to go to the well uh, and really show what he's about. He showed uh, extreme heart and bravery and desire in there, Fabio. Tremendous, tremendous heart and bravery, you know. But but they both did. They both did. I mean, there was, you know, that it sort of flowed, didn't it? Ebbed and flowed the fight between the two of them. Um, and you know, obviously, Fraser has that wealth of experience as an amateur. But Fabio, you know, he's, he's done brilliantly for himself since he's turned professional with a very limited, um, I would say, amateur boxing background coming from, was it what, uh, from blue collar, white collar fighting? Yeah, so like he's, yeah. yeah and licensed boxing, he's done extremely, extremely well and he should be proud of himself. When you look at the the top, top guys, obviously they're in a the league of their own, your Tysons, your Rusik, Josh just putting back, self back in the picture. But with your guys, um, I'm referring to your Joe Joyce's, your Daniel Dubois. Where do you rank Fraser and Fabio in that bracket, Frank? I think they've got a ways to go to get to that 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 yet. And you know, you're having tough fights like that. That you know, was it was it eighth or ninth fight for Fraser? Ninth for Fraser. Ninth. I mean, that's a that's a hard hard fight to have for your ninth fight, and you don't want to be having too many of those fights. I'm speaking that as a you know, as a, a manager of a fighter, and or if, you know, you don't want to be having too many of them because all that is is miles on the clock at that level. You know, at that 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 stage of your career. So, would you say uh, that there's a gap still between your Joe Joyce's, your Daniel Dubois? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you were handling this situation now, of course, from a fan perspective, we'd love to see a rematch. But Fabio retains his titles through the draw; doesn't have to fight Fraser Clark again. If you were in Ben Shalom, Sky Sports' position, what would you be doing with this? Well, if I was in, in Sky Sports, I'd want, want that again. I'm sure they, you know, it, it was well received. I mean, you know, a lot of people have been talking about it and they put it on a good slot. So it got good exposure. Uh, I'd want to be doing that again all day long. Would you do it straight away or would you build those guys first and then make a, a bigger rematch? Well, they don't need to be built, do they? I mean, the fight was what it was, and you're you're not going to make that any better. You know, the rematch will be exact, be as exciting. I think they I think they know enough will know en enough about each other that the next time it won't go the distance. You mentioned the slot, and there's been a lot of coverage since the fight happened on Sunday night. Obviously, because it was a great fight, but. I feel like um, it helped that it was at a 9.30 p.m. ring walk. Now, mainly the, the shows that you do, that Eddie do, and, and previous ones that Sky were doing, roughly the ring walks for main event are 10, sometimes 10.30, even 11 o'clock. Can we see main events become earlier than sort of the 9, 9.30 mark, Frank? I think they did that because it was a unique situation. It was Easter Sunday. It came on after the, 
after the two top of the league, you know, we were two two of the top teams in the league playing, and they carried the audience with them. They were able to advertise it. Normally, you wouldn't want um, to be putting fights on at nine thirty at night on a Saturday night because you're up against uh, a lot of lot of uh, terrestrial programming you know strong programming so you're looking to make it a little bit late so that's why they are late and obviously um if you you know most venues the doors don't open till seven o'clock or whatever you you're not going to have much of a, of a card are you you know you, by the time you get to the main event people will leave and there'll be nothing happening that that's not that's not going to be the norm that's for sure i mean when we used to do our shows on terrestrial tv years years ago um, the main event would come on after the news, the ten thirty news. It, that was always the case. Were you surprised with the turnout in there? Because I think there was about thirteen, fourteen thousand people. And beforehand, did this Sunday, Fabio and Fraser. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say they're household names or anything. It was, it was quite. Um, yeah, it was a lot of people at the O2 on Sunday night. Well, it's good. I mean, it, 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 you know, it, I think everything. All the stars aligned, as I said earlier, Easter Sunday after the football, you know, people, the weather was pretty crappy, wasn't it? We didn't exactly have brilliant weather over the People want to want something somewhere to go, want, want to go and watch something. They hadn't got to get up most people for work at the next day, so it worked out. Okay. Any thoughts on the undercard uh, on Sunday? I didn't. I, I haven't seen all of it. I only see some of the fights on there. Uh, yeah, it was, it was an okay undercard. Yeah, it was an okay undercard. And Whitaker, yeah, he's you know, I want to look. He, he's 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 carving a a niche out for himself, and you know, he's uh, a lot of stuff going on outside the ring that people talk about more than what goes on in the ring. And sometimes in the ring, he's doing things that he get away with at this level. But as the opposition steps up in quality, um, we'll find out. We'll find out about him. I don't know also if you saw on the broadcast uh, that we saw live at, at the arena, uh, Chris Eubank Sr. got in the ring. Obviously, Harlem, uh, his nephew, is now going to be fine. Adam Azim. Everyone wanted to see Adam Azim and Dalton Smith. Looks like that is not happening next. Your thoughts on Adam Azim and uh, Harlem Eubank? It is what it is. It's a, de it's a decent fight. Um, I'd have preferred to see Dalton Smith in because he's come in with a, you know, um, I would have preferred to see that fight, but you know that's a that's still a good fight. That's a decent fight to watch. With we'll, yeah, we'll see, we'll see what they're made of. Okay, let's move on to uh, business with yourself. So, the Fury Usyk undercard was announced. I just want to read a quote from His Excellency uh, Turkey El Sheikh. He had this to say after there was a, a little bit of criticism um, from fans about the card. So he said. A powerful card for all boxing fans featuring a minimum of three to four fights that could easily be main events. Anyone searching for lower quality or bizarre clown fights should look elsewhere. We are committed to delivering exceptional cards for boxing fans around the world. Absolutely agree with that. And and it is, it is a great card. And he's right what he says. There's the number of fights on there over here would be, would be top of the bills. You know that and I know that. The main event. Let's talk about the main event first. It is the biggest fight this century. It's the first time four heavyweight fights, sorry, four heavyweight world title belts have been on the line. It's cost a fortune to get those two guys into the ring to make it happen. What are we doing? Are we buying an undercard show or are we buying the that fight? The rest of it is a massive, massive bonus. Every other fight on there is a bloody good fight. Good British fights as well. Kakachi fight with Cordina. You know, that, uh, put it on. I've done that the other way around. Cordina v. Kachi. That's a cracking fight. There's some brilliant fights on there. Some exciting fights on there, all the way through. And I just don't get. I don't. I don't get it. Why? Why anybody would say that? I, I've seen some comments about that, and I, it was brought to my attention over the weekend. But then I look. So I've seen the some people saying that. But then I look at the comments underneath, and they they. Most of them, I would say 99% of them, uh, uh, agree it's a bloody good undercard, a great undercard for the show. And I think, was it Sports Bible put it up and they took it down, didn't they? Yeah, so His Excellency actually um, tagged Sports Bible in it. So he was... Yeah, and they took it down. And quite rightly, they should say that. You know, I think it's disrespectful to the fighters on the undercard and to the show. 
everybody, but everybody has moaned and moaned and moaned. Tyson's fight's been postponed. This is that. Now we're having a pop at something else. I mean, now you get a life, for God's sake. What a load of miserable bastards. What more, what more do you want? Do you think we're just in a culture where people just want to moan about something? I don't give a shit what the culture is. You're either going to watch it or you ain't going to watch it. It's a great, great show. Doesn't matter what anybody says. And if anybody says anything different, then obviously they've got an agenda or they're complete imbeciles and don't know about boxing. What, referring to Sport Bible there? Sorry? Are you referring to Sport that, Bible? That, if, that's, if, that was, if it was them that said it, absolutely I'm referring to them because it's a stupid comment. And if it wasn't, and if they stood by it, why did they take it down? Let's just go through the card then. Uh, we got. Uh, Marius Bradis and, and Jay Opatia in a rematch for, for Jai's world title. I mean, it, has he not been an exciting fighter? And isn't that isn't that a, and Bradis isn't that a good opponent? That's a cracking fight. There's no doubt about that. Nothing wrong with that fight whatsoever. Um, Moses Atama, obviously someone you believe will be future heavyweight world oh, champion. Look, he's still he's still a young young. Uh, a young heavyweight. He's only turned 19 a couple of months ago. You know, he's the former world world amateur champion, European amateur champion, stopped everybody in all those fights or had them all on the floor in all of those fights. And he's done brilliantly since he's turned professional. He's going from strength to strength. And again, he'll go in with somebody who hopefully will try and give him some rounds. But it's very difficult when you're fighting somebody who's, who's such a concussive puncher. You guys have added a, a fight from the original card. Um, which was supposed to be on, on Feb 17th, a heavyweight fight between Ajit Caballo and Frank Sanchez has been added. Well, there's a terrible fight. Both 24 and 0. 24 and 0. Correct me if I'm wrong. Weren't a lot of people screaming out when Tyson was uh, Tyson fought uh, against Nagano? Why is he not fighting Frank Sanchez? Correct. Well, yeah. San Frank Sanchez is now on the card fighting an undefeated fighter. That's the top of the bill anywhere, that fight. His Excellency's favourite fighter, Mark Chamberlain, returns. <laughs> he has, and he's going to be in a he's going to be in a good fight. The guy, he's fighting. Uh, well, it's just it's, we're just waiting for the contracts to return. But please, you know, if it's all done, then uh, I think everybody will be happy with that fight as well. He's only, I think, he's had thirty fights and only lost one. On Mark Chamberlain, do you see his now his future being in Riyadh in Saudi Arabia? That's up to him and the performances he puts in. It's, it, his future's in his butt, in that hand and that hand. No, and just, just say that, does, if, if he keeps performing like he has been, I'm just saying that because we know uh, His Excellency absolutely loves him. So I'm just thinking he'd want him on on his on his cards in, in Riyadh. You know, if he fight, if he fights on on those cards, that's brilliant. And if he may fight over here on a couple of cards, I mean, but the, all he's got to keep doing is doing the business. You know, as you say, um, His Excellency likes him, as we all do. You know, I manage him as well as promote him. So, you know, uh, we all believe in him and we'll see we'll see what happens. But he's got just doing what he's doing and he had a marvellous performance last time out. That was a really good performance by him. Good win. Again, what could anybody moan about that, having him on the card? Last one to mention as well, uh, one of the greatest light heavyweights we've seen uh, in Sergei Kovalev does fight as well, which is a surprise. Didn't I didn't really know he's still, still about Sergei Kovalev, but he's on the card as well. Yeah, he's on the card. Um, it was part of. He was supposed to fight on the. Uh, it was well, on the card because obviously he's with K two, he's with um, uh, um, with Vegas and and their team, and so he's 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 one of their fighters that are fighting on the card. But great, let's get him on there. I hope he has a good win, and there's some. We certainly got some fighters for him to fight in the future. It's a good card. It's a very 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 good fighting card. There's no doubt about that. Come on, and as we're talking about light heavyweights, what is going on with Anthony Yard and Joshua Boatsy? Well, we're still negotiating it, and uh, hopefully we're going to get it over the line. I'm just He's away on holiday at the moment, um, Anthony. He's, in, he's uh, in North Africa on holiday. When he gets back, hopefully we'll resolve everything. OK. When I spoke to you when we went to that lunch last week, um, have things moved forward since, with Anthony's team since then or not? Well, he's away, so until he comes back, and there was apparently bad reception where he was at with his phone or something. Okay, but so with, his with, with his management... I got, text, I got a text off him on Saturday saying that, saying that he had bad reception on his phone. Okay, but dis discussions with his management team? 
we're, 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 we're continuing trying to make the fight. Everybody says they want it, and we certainly want it. Okay. And in terms of uh, Joshua Boazzi, obviously you revealed to me that he'd agreed terms. Um, is he getting he, a bit he, frustrated? He has, he, 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 he has agreed terms, yeah. Is he getting a bit frustrated during this time or not? I don't know. You better ask him. I will do. Uh, lastly, just to finish off, you must have seen uh, Joseph Parker's incredible call-out of Dillian White. Of course, those guys have history. Dillian did beat him uh, a while back at the O2, but Joseph Parker's now cemented himself as a top three, top four, definitely everywhere in the world after his wins with Wilder and, and Jang. Um, <laughs> what did you make of his call-out? Yeah, I thought it was quite entertaining. You know, Joe, Joe, he, 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 they obviously put a lot of thought into it, but, you know, Joe, don't give up your boxing career, mate. <laughs> no, it, was, uh, it was good. It was very, very entertaining. And obviously it's caught everybody's imagination. And that's what it's all about, promotion. Is that is that a fight you've discussed with uh, his excellence in Saudi Arabia, Parker White? Well, I don't know if, um, if uh, Dillian's clear to box with the boxing board of control. Okay. Yeah, I guess that's an issue that will have to be resolved. Yeah. Well, that, exactly. Okay, we'll leave that one there. Uh, Frank, is there anything else you'd like to add before we close off? No, I just want to go on, again, mention, you know, this stuff with it. I, I don't understand this 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 nastiness with, with people about, you know, wanting to pick, pick that show apart on the 18th. And, it's, and, and by the way, it's a very, 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 very small amount of trolls that are doing it. The, you know, in a vast majority of people have said how it is. So at the end of the day, you know, look, everybody has a choice. You, you look on your TV or on your remote, it's got an on button and an off button. So make your mind up what you want to do. Okay, Frank Warren, thank you very much for to Box Nation. I will see you when I'm next looking at you. Beat you to the punch again. Keep doing it. Keep countering. I've got. To, I've got to come up with a counter. Not before. Not before I see you. <laughs> All right, Frank. Take care. Speak soon. Cheers. See you, mate. Be good. Bye.